Sure, I'm Connor Welch. Pavin Shetty. Well, I loved the show. Oh, thank you. Binged it last night. Um, right. Stayed up way too late. Um, <laughs> But I was really surprised when it got to episode two, and it's not an anthology. We're not meeting a new cast of characters. Was that always the plan going into it, or um, you know, was that something that came through the development process? I mean, we were lucky to have access to all of the Goosebumps books through Scholastic, and so it was a real challenge to figure out which ones we were going to pull from. So we knew for the first half of the season we were going to pull from some of the most popular ones. So you're right that they're not pure anthologies, but for the first five episodes, we do come straight from five of the most popular books. And the issues in the books kind of align with the issues the teenagers are having. And after that, for the second half of the season, it's just pulling from all of the books when the kids come together. So we knew we weren't going to do a straight anthology because we wanted to have an ongoing situation, ongoing teen drama, ongoing stuff with our cast that people kept driving through the season with. But we wanted to take as much as possible to together. Yeah, and it was important that it's sort of binge-worthy, for yeah. lack of a better term, these days, especially since it's on a service like Disney+. Plus. Uh, so we wanted to have, yeah, an arc and a mystery that would keep an audience, you know, coming back for more, wondering what happens next, as opposed to the previous TV series or the movies or the books that were, you know, anthological, kind of close-ended episodes. Yeah. It definitely works. Oh, thank you. <laughs> nice. Can you talk about the process of deciding to bring, you know, this like, you know, book series to screen again? Um, you know, what was development like when, like, how did that all work? Yeah, I mean, the good thing for both of us is we actually grew up reading the books, so we were fans before we even started working on the project. Um, and my company, Original Film, produced the movies, and so um, Rob Letterman directed the first movie, and Rob and I and Neil Moritz started talking about what it would be like as a show. And we knew if we were going to do a TV show, we wanted to take these iconic stories and do kind of an elevated take on them, because we knew how loved they were. And we went to Nick and Connor because all of us had kind of worked together before to really put that together. And they came up with a version of the show that we all felt good about that Goosebumps fans like us would actually like, but new people who hadn't read any of the books would appreciate it too. And so that was always top of mind in development. Totally. And because there had been a TV series before, because there had been two movies, it was super important to us that this have a reason for being and not tread on territory that had been tread on before in, in previous adaptations. So that was one of the reasons we aged it up a little bit, put it in high school instead of middle school, uh, why we made it uh, serialized as opposed to anthological. And uh, and yeah, we, we wanted it to be surprising and entertaining for fans and, and, and for folks who didn't maybe know as, as much about the books. Hi, uh, Gotham Geek Girl here. I just want to say I really enjoyed the show, and I love that, like we mentioned, the uh, premise it's not an anthology, but that it's also a little more adult themed. Yeah. Uh, so I think it's being that we grew up with it as kids, and now as adults we can enjoy it. I really like that. Yeah. Um, so I guess how did you guys kind of go with the concept of making it a little more adult themed, and like you said, like now they're in high school, and kind of making it a little darker in a sense as well? Yeah. Well, like you said, I grew up reading them as well. My 11-year-old daughter is reading them now. So the endeavor was to, f to create a show that we could both watch and enjoy together. Um, and so, but the line is tricky, right? For it to be funny and scary for adults while also being funny and scary for kids. Uh, Disney was super helpful in making sure we were towing the line, getting right up at, at, you know, to it and never kind of going over the line. So the scares were very much tension driven and never gore or blood and guts type stuff. And the jokes, I think, you know, were generally elevated and had some edge, but never getting inappropriate. But, uh, but yeah, it was definitely a tricky dance because, um, you know, there's not a lot that, uh, me and my daughter can watch and be entertained by together. So finding that sweet spot, um, yeah, that was the dream. And the, you know, the kids in the books are in middle school and our kids are in high school. And we did that intentionally because high school is the weirdest time ever. It's super awkward, it's super messy, it's super funny, but it's also really scary even without these things happening. So we knew we were gonna like try to, that's a ripe territory for doing any type of story. So having the high school kids there, and then we really wanted to talk about their parents too, because the parents play a huge role in the show. And we wanted to talk about the relationships between the kids and their parents, the relationship between the parents themselves. And you realize that in the show, the kids are having to clean up the mess that their parents created. And so that there's a lot of a adult dynamics built into that um, without being too alienated. Good job. Thanks so much. Such a talented young cast at the Hamilton Project. What was that passing process of like finding those actors that can play well in both the drama and the comedy, which was the hardest role to cast for? 
gosh, they were all difficult because we wanted new faces in those roles that maybe would be a surprise to an audience to introduce folks uh, for the first time. And we needed there to be a chemistry with them, which is really difficult to find until you're actually shooting. Um, and we needed to find kids that were close enough to the teenage experience that they could lend some authenticity to it. And once they were cast is when we really started writing towards and around them with their input. Because it was important to us that it felt as true to the high school, the contemporary high school experience as possible. And as, you know, 40 yeah. somethings, we're not, you know, as plugged into that these days. So they were instrumental in making sure that their characters felt real and that they gave a, a lot of their sort of personal energies towards, uh, yeah, which was great. And the first person we cast was Justin Long for that role. And he's perfect for it because he's done so many comedies, coming of age movies and shows, but he's also done a lot of horrors, horror things. And um, he was just coming off Barbarian when we shot this. And so he's kind of perfect as a person who seamlessly goes between comedy and drama. And in the show, his body is taken over by a 16 year old kid. So there's a lot of physical humor there too. And he really threw himself literally, literally. literally yeah. like into the role. And yeah. so we kind of lucked out with him. And the other adult actors, Rob Hubel and, and Rachel, are just so funny. You know, they're all comedy people and they bring so much comedically, but they're also really good dramatically too. So we lucked out with the entire cast. Totally. Thank you. Cool. Um, so as fans of the books, were there any deeper cuts that you either fought to get into the first season or you're like saving for maybe another season? Well, as Puppet said, we luckily have access to the whole yeah. series. So yeah, there's a lot of things. I won't speak specifically, so it's not to give any spoilers, but yeah, this one play, uh, draws from five of sort of the most popular of the canon for the first five episodes, pulls some Easter eggs from others throughout. But yeah, we hope to draw on, on many more uh, for hopefully many, many seasons to come. So, so many. Yeah. Could really. I know, I know, yeah. truly. A deep, deep well. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, Mike, uh, Geek Fives Nation. Sorry, Mike, Geek Fives Nation. Um, I, I love that this show is inclusive. You have a queer character and it's very incidental. Um, was that always the plan? And um, how did you take steps to kind of make it feel authentic without like virtue signaling? Sure. Yeah, I mean, like Connor said, the, the characters were written, and then once we cast the show, the actors themselves brought a lot of their own personality and experiences to the role. And so we just kind of let them bring whatever they've experienced in real life to the role and kind of wrote around that. So we never tried to do anything that we hadn't experienced ourselves. We just let them bring it, and then they were just so good and real and authentic, and it kind of worked out in this sort of environment. So um, they just really did it th themselves. Yeah. And it wasn't to be important, even though I think it is, but uh, but just to be as close to the actual authentic high school experience yeah, that's what that's high going on like now. now. You know, yeah. so yeah, that was it. Yeah, and I think it strikes uh, an amazing balance. I mean, like as a queer person, it's so great to see more great, really um, great uh, representation. Nice. Yeah. 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 Oh, excellent. Right, thank Thanks you. so much. No, thank you.